Okay, where are we? I'll tell you what, I want to get this engine primed. In order to do that, I'm going to take these plugs back out. And I'm going to put a little bit of oil down in each cylinder. And then I'm going to hook the battery up and I'm going to crank the engine. What we want to do here is circulate the oil through the engine before we actually start it up. We start the engine up dry, well, it's on us that we blew it up. We want to make sure that the engine has plenty of lubrication when it starts. This way it will have a long and fruitful life. Which is what we want in our truck. I mean, come on, it's a truck. Trucks got to be tough. Even if they have little rinky-dink four cylinders in them, they still got to be tough. Or it might be better to say they should be tough. Took a little vacuum line, put it on the end of my oil can. This will help me get it down in to that cylinder. I only want a few squirts. You don't want to overload it. Just need enough to wet the top of that piston. I guess we'll hook the negative battery cable up and turn the key. You're going to get to actually watch the crankshaft spin. I'll make it so that you can also see if there's any oil that comes shooting out. That would be exciting. We're going to need to hook us up a battery charger. And then we're going to need to charge the battery while we finish putting the rest of the stuff together. I suspect it as much. but. This is how it is when things sit for long periods of time. Okay, we're on engine start. Alright, now let's crank it. Don't want to burn up my battery charger, but I want to show you what uh, I'm looking at when I do this. And that's the oil pressure gauge. And when I first started cranking, it was at zero, but then it, it came up. So since, since we have our oil pressure sending unit hooked up, we'll be able to see oil pressure as we crank. I am going to just hook the battery charger up to the battery and let that charge as, as we finish up. So I'm going to try to keep that in a place that's out of my way. But that's we're obviously going to need the battery charged up in order to, to finish this. In fact, I may even remove the battery, charge it over on the bench. In fact, I think that would be the best option for us. But now I know that, that our engine has the ability to create oil pressure. I, I feel pretty good when I go to start it up. I can't remember where I got these, but I got these little battery terminal things that just kind of screw right in. Really nice for when you're charging the battery or when you want to switch this to like, you know, real battery terminals. All right, I have it set for automatic regulator. I've got it on 10 amp. I only expect to be working for a little bit longer uh, before I'm ready to start this up, but I, I think we've, we've established that we've got oil pressure, so we're in a good place. So I will plug it in and uh, let this guy charge while we finish up. All right, I'm thinking before I get too far and I forget, I should plug this uh, ignition module back in. And I think the big connector goes in the bottom and the smaller connector goes up top. All right, they're both plugged in. Like I said, I want to make sure that they're not all pulled around or anything. I want to make sure that they plugged in correctly. We're done plugging stuff in down here. Let's get this thing done. Probably not a bad idea to let it down a little bit. That way I can gain access to the stuff up top a little easier.
Well, that's a much nicer place to work. Being very careful not to drop these into these wells. I've done that before. I've been an electrode and I created a misfire. A slightly longer extension. That's what she said. Somebody had to say it. I know one of you would have. I read the comments. I don't think I don't. It feels so real now that the plugs are in. Reconnecting the fuel injection. Don't forget to install the little blue lock. It's like the little gremlins are gonna come in here and like disconnect all the connectors. I, all right, whatever. Now hopefully my numbering system worked. I say hopefully because there's always a chance that it didn't. Always. Always a chance that uh, you screwed something up. Never forget that. Am I worried about my pieces of masking tape still being on there? No. It's kind of like my signature. Ooh, this is interesting. I'll have to show you a close up of that, but we got a smashed wire here. That could be a problem right there. I'll show you a close up in a second. I don't like my wires to touch if I can help it. So I try to route them in such a way to where they're as clean as possible. That's what I try to do. Does that always work? Well, I'll let you know. Anytime you see something like this, and you've got definitely what looks like melted wireness, probably a good idea to address it. I'm gonna remove this insulation and stuff and see if the insulation has been compromised. And I'm gonna find out where this is routed, where it goes to, and make sure that it doesn't happen again. All right, here's a better look. This guy goes to the coolant temperature sensor, which is pretty stinking important. I feel hard wires underneath. So I'm gonna cut that out, shorten it up just a little bit, repair it, and be back with you. You want to know more about what I'm doing? I'll post a link in the description to uh, my soldering wire videos that everybody hates. So what do you think? Good solder joint or bad solder joint? You make the call. Good as new, if not better. False coolant temperature sensor readings can cause problems. We could have just prevented a comeback right there. I know it took us a little bit of extra time, but hey, if it fixes the truck, it fixes the truck. All right, maybe it's time we start restoring some of these electrical connections. That stuff goes to throttle body, that goes to the air conditioning. This goes to coolant temp sensor, like we know. Uh, not sure where that goes, probably something on a throttle body. All right, speaking of that throttle body, uh, I'm wondering if before we do that though, if maybe we should get this radiator in here and the fan and everything else, and possibly the air conditioner, um, because it'll be much easier to get the stuff without stuff from the throttle body being in the way. So I think, yeah, I'm gonna go grab a shop back and get rid of all that. And then we'll drop the new radiator. Well, before we do that, should we put the fan on? No, we can do that after.
more wiring stuff that uh, could use some attention. This time the wires aren't damaged, it's just the outer shell here. It might have just gotten melted from the overheat because this is the side where the radiator went. I'm just going to cover it up. Believe me, skip this stuff. This is the kind of stuff that comes back to bite you in the butt. Take care of this while you're looking at it. Leave it and forget about it. And it's possible it'll come back to haunt you. Let's put our shiny new radiator in here. Remember these little things that we held back? I'm gonna put those onto the bottom of the radiator now. And I'm gonna slide it right down into the mounting holes. Right there and right there. So this power steering hose looks like it's gonna be kind of an issue. We have to keep an eye out for that stuff as we're installing it. Make sure nothing's getting in our way, binding up, what have you. Seems to fit like a glove. Some of you may notice the different uh, petcock here that it, this version has. I think that's a good thing. At least you don't need some kind of weird special tool to install it. Now this radiator is held in by the upper shroud. For now, I'm just going to put the uh, overflow tube on which gets routed up under everything and connects to here. You know, now that this is in here, I think I'm gonna finish up up there and get the serpentine belt on before I start putting any more stuff here that I have to uh, be careful of. All right, air conditioning compressor or throttle body. First thing I'm gonna do is throw all the bolts for the throttle body on the floor in places where I can't find them. I'll be back in a minute. Love my magnets. All right, throttle body it is. We did not replace this gasket. Don't get mad. Um, it just worked out that way. I think it'll be fine. These rubber gaskets, they're good for more than one use. At least I think they are. These are 10 millimeter. This gives us the opportunity to renew some electrical connections. Throttle position sensor. Uh, this looks like it goes to the idle air control valve. We also have a vacuum line here that fits. So, stinging loose. Because that's not where it goes. Ha ha! It actually goes over here to this. This whole time I'm fighting with these AC lines. Okay, that's where you go. You have a someone else, don't you? Where are you, someone else? Ah, I bet you there's something on the intake that goes to that. I have to look into it. But I'm trying to keep these wires away from trouble, especially. So I don't want them to be in the same position that they were in when they had that problem. This goes to AC compressor, so that we'll just leave that lay there. So that's the last electrical connection, so we just gotta solve the mystery. Solved. I just pulled up another vacuum line here from back here. And that is our mystery vacuum connection. I'm thinking air box, then AC compressor. All right, remember our PCV needs to hook up here and then this will mount right here, which is where I believe we had an issue in the past. 
And then of course we've got the screw clamp for the throttle body itself. It's like we nailed it. Unless we route this under here, it's not going to hook up to the AC compressor. This is where we need to be careful not to pinch any wires. This is where it will happen if it does. Let's get that dang AC compressor on there. I'm tired of fighting with those lines. These two fasteners that I've sort of held in place, I'm just going to remove those. Also need to take the two out of the front of the compressor itself. Electrical connection. I think they designed this connector so that it only goes on one way. There we go. But not impossible. like ragu man it's in there for those of you that want to know how that gets routed tensioner gets pulled over this way I used this tensioner tool with an extension on it I still had to fight with that AC line but you know how it goes let's get some fan shrouds and stuff in here let's let's get this thing together I want to hear it run I'm gonna put the lower fan shroud in first And it just clips in this lower cover were a couple of uh, places where this uh, hose could get routed that would be the overflow hose Cool. How about a fan? Remember this trick? Will it work here though? Tight in there.
If I can spin it back and forth like that, I'm good. All it usually takes is a couple of whacks with a hammer. And if this spins freely, it's not good. But if it gives you some resistance like this one's doing, you're all right. Let's get that upper shroud in here. better. I'm just going to make sure the fan spins without any obstruction. And it does. Yay. I'm going to get these AC hoses from flopping around. They look like they live here. That's helpful. We have our air intake assembly. Might have uh, Put those hoses down just a little too soon. I'm not sure how this was held in place. Remember, I didn't take this apart. Well, I didn't find anything to hold that down yet, but I did find this piece, which looks like it goes up under here. Um, hang on a second. I almost think it might be easier to do this. Almost glad I took that battery out. I need to take a break from you, figure this out, come back. All right, here it is. I had to flip it around back this way so that the top little peg piece was coming up through here on this. That's the only way it would fit in and that's the only way it really makes sense is backed up against the fan shroud here pretty much as a unit with this upper air intake. A little bit of a fight. I also uh, took this upper radiator hose off so I could get better access. I'll reconnect it now. Hook the clamp up and Obviously tighten that clamp too. Air filter assembly. These two pieces have to fit down onto pegs down in here. Right there. The other one goes to this fastener here. So it's just held on to the one fastener and then located by those two pegs. Then we have our intake air temperature sensor that plugs in right back here. Don't do that, you'll get an IAT code. Check engine light be yelling at you. Guess we'll need this battery thing. Much easier to put the block in after the battery's in. Slide it up under the hook. Block in. 13. Positive goes on first. Did I mention I despise these battery terminals? They're a cross thread waiting to have. I think they were made in an effort to keep the battery terminals from corroding. They don't. How about some coolant? Look, Ma, no more parts. 
well, there is that hubcap I need to put back on, but, and then those little flaps that go for the hood, um, we're kicking its butt. It comes in the kit that way. I really hope I get to go home tonight. Now, this used to have Dexcool in it. Not anymore. A lot of people don't like Dexcool. They say it uh, causes problems with the cooling system. I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying that I'm switching this over to uh, regular cooling. It'll work just fine. Hey Ryan, you mind if I uh, put regular coolant in your truck instead of Dexcool? No, he's good. Anybody else curious to see if this thing's gonna run? I know I am. I want my heat all the way to hot, fan and AC to be off when I start this up. And then when I start it up, I'm gonna let it sort of even out. Uh, you wanted mileage. We got 89,198, looks like. Let's, let's see if this works. She's gonna drive away today. I'm gonna get a look up underneath, make sure there's nothing leaking, and uh, bleed the cooling system out. Then it's time to go for a drive. You might catch it just before it gets dark. Got wicked good oil pressure, no check engine lights at all. Parking brakes on, yes, because I've got it up in the air, but we are uh, ready to go. Catalytic converter stinks though. It's looking good. Let's get this park partially outside so uh, we don't asphyxiate ourselves. Gonna top off the coolant here. Gonna run the engine at about 2,000 RPM until I'm sure the coolant has circulated through, the thermostat's opened up, and I've got good heat, and then it's time for a test drive. You're gonna see smoke and stuff coming off the engine, completely normal. There's all kinds of stuff that's on there that we'll have to burn off before everything's normal again. Check the heat. Heat is awesome, temperature's good. I'm gonna top off the cooling system, put on the radiator cap, and let's go for a ride. drive it. Alright, it might be a little dark for you to see, but 
We're still gonna drive. Yes, with no hood. Cause we're cool like that. Clutch feels great, by the way. I don't feel like I need to do anything to it. We got a truck backing up here. Kind of looks like he got into a place that he shouldn't be in. Poor guy. Sneak past him. All right, let's take this up through the RPM range. She's doing great. Shifting great, driving great. This thing is flipping great. Could not be happier. All right, I'm gonna give this a proper shakedown. I'll check back with you when I get to the shop. Catch you in a bit. All right, just got back to the shop. All the gauges are looking really good. So voltage is good. No check engine lights, no nothing. Ran perfect, perfect. Ran like a new engine. So let's uh, get the hood back on this thing. Get this thing packaged up and ready to go back to Ryan's family. I think his brother's gonna be the one driving it now. Okay, not quite out of the woods. I pulled it in and noticed coolant dripping down the back of the engine. And since there's no hoses or anything back there, I definitely became concerned. And from what I'm finding. Hopefully it'll focus on that. Yeah. That's the bottom of the cylinder head where it meets the block. And that's where it's leaking. It's leaking right out of the back of the cylinder head. So, um, can't very well let it go like this. What I'm gonna have to do is move the stuff on the top of the engine check of the torque of the head bolts and see where we're at from there. I'm a little bummed. I'm glad the engine runs. I'm glad the, the thing's like cooking with gas, but this is a real setback, unfortunately. I also need to talk to Ryan's mom about this a little bit, see what she wants to do. Okay, not wanting to dig into the cylinder head and that whole mess, I decided to take a look at the old block here. It appears right in the center of this area here and that plate that I installed, this is carbon, this is carbon, but this is clean, so this is coolant. So if this plate on the back here isn't sealing right, it could be my fault. So I'm gonna just sneak my hand down in there with a gear wrench, snug up those bolts and see if that solves it. Here's those are eight millimeter. Got a couple turns out of each one of those bolts. Now let's see if it was successful. Okay, I've lifted it up, gone over it with some compressed air and got rid of most of what I was able to see down here. So we should know for sure if uh, we got the coolant leak or not. It'd be great if we did. I'm also gonna leave a fresh piece of cardboard under here to catch any drips. Let it run for a while, see what we get. So far, so good. Well, so far, so good. 
I just see a little bit of residual stuff, but I see nothing new. It was dripping pretty good before, it's not anymore. I think we got it. That oil is at the perfect level. Well, that was a challenge. Yeah, I've been at it for, uh, I'd say three days total on this 2001 GMC Sonoma, two-wheel drive, 2.2 liter, manual transmission, roughly 89,000 miles. It got a new engine. Now, I never heard the old engine run, so I don't know if it was bad or not. It was brought to me, I was told it was bad. I brought an engine, I was told to put it in. This is what I did. As far as what we saw when we took apart the old engine, we did see some bearings that looked pretty beat up. I suspect it had a rod knock, but from as hot as this thing got, I imagine that's what did it in. Well, whatever happened to that radiator that caused it to split open like that and spill all of its coolant. When you, when you get metal hot, that hot, parts will warp, parts will bend, parts will not be good. In fact, I mean, if, if you think about the friction involved here, if it is possible for that cast iron to get like cherry red, like you heated it up with a blowtorch. And once that happens, it's, it's kind of over. So. I can't have any regrets for putting this engine in because, well, gosh darn it, it, it runs freaking excellent. And I'm, I'm very, very, very pleased with the result. And I know Ryan is too. I know, he's, uh, I know he's been hanging out with me for the duration of this, uh, this repair. If I were to do this again and it's a manual transmission, I would pull the engine and transmission all at the same time. And then I'd take the transmission off while it's out of the truck, do whatever I had to do to the engine, then I'd mate the tube back up while it's outside of the truck. It's very difficult. See, what you're doing is you've got this big heavy engine and you've got this transmission with this input shaft. And the input shaft is straight, it's not gonna move. And it's only a hole about that big. Don't, don't even start. So you've gotta, <laughs> yeah, I know. So you've got to get that input shaft into the back of that crankshaft and trying to do that completely blind with an engine block hanging precariously, it is extremely difficult. It took me three hours to get it. And the funny thing is, is I had it and then I pulled it back and it came apart and then it took three hours to get it back together. I think it would have saved a lot of time had I dropped that cross member underneath the transmission, unbolted that. Drain the transmission fluid, pull the drive shaft right out of the back of it, and just pull the engine and transmission as a unit. I would do that next time. However, if you have an automatic transmission, leave it in. Leave it in because it's a big heavy slush box, you don't want to mess with it anyway, and do it like I did here. Automatic transmission, you don't have that whole input shaft thing going on. You just mate the two up together, you know, spin it around, get the torque converter bolts all hooked up, you're good. You're good. Manual transmission, a little bit different. 
Um, and you have to get the shifter out. So you have to pull the carpet up, pull the boot up. There's some bolts on the top of the transmission. You just unbolt the whole shifter assembly and pull it out the top. And once you do that, you got a big hole on top of the transmission, throw a rag in there to keep junk out. Then shift the whole thing right out with the engine. And I would say that's the way I would do it. If I were to do this again, that's the way I would do it. Also, I would lift it up, take the engine mounts off, drop it back down, and then take the bell housing bolts and everything out. That is extremely helpful. Also, anything to access back there, because you got like about that much room with the engine mounts on, but you got this much room with it sitting down inside the cradle. So that was also a very helpful tip. Let's do this. If I miss something, I'll come back with a voiceover right here. Well, thank you, Eric. Kind of a goofy face you got going on there. As I predicted uh, when I shot that video originally, things had changed a little bit and I did have some more things to add. So I'm just gonna do a different closing slash conclusion to this uh, Sonoma engine video. I, I really enjoyed doing this video. It's, it's been a very successful series. Uh, I think in the comments of just about every week, uh, you know, where's the next part, where's the next part. That says to me that, that this is a format that you know, you the viewers really enjoy and I enjoyed it as well because these longer videos give me the chance to get the kind of depth that I like to get into these videos and you know obviously it's it's a tribute to my friend Ryan and also his his parents and, and his family as far as this video is concerned uh, a couple of things I'd just like to add real quick I am going to make a full version of this video uh, in other words no part one part two part three part you know None of that, there's gonna be one complete version. Um, on my website, uh, I have a premium membership program to where premium members get like early releases of my videos. Uh, they also get exclusive videos. I'm going to make a streaming version of this video available to premium members of EricTheCarGuy.com. You can get into that for as little as 99 cents a month. You can decide whether it's worth it or not to you, or you can watch each one of these parts on YouTube absolutely free. There will be a little bit of bonus footage, a little bit of extra things that'll be in that other version that weren't necessarily in the version that you saw. So if you're interested in that, it will be available to you. However, I did speak about uh, the American Cancer Society and I'm gonna be a little more specific than that. I'm actually going to be donating to Reflections of Grace. In fact, I already did. Uh, Ryan's parents were, I, I told them not to worry about paying me about this job. I would get my money off the video and I was just completely happy with that. They insisted on paying me. I just took their money, donated that to Reflections of Grace, which is, a, is an organization that strictly focuses on DIPG and victims of DIPG. Uh, I'm going to stick to that. It's, it's really focused. It's, it's what Ryan, you know, eventually succumbed to. So that's where I want to direct my energy and my resources. To that end, what I'd like to do, in addition to making the streaming version available on the website, I also sell videos as downloads and I would like to put together a download version of this Sonoma engine video series. 100% of the proceeds from that are gonna to go to Reflections of Grace. So anything that's spent on the download goes straight to that. So it's up to you. So to give you an option to donate and actually get something back for your money, uh, I'm gonna offer you the full length version of the, the Sonoma engine replacement series. Uh, so that, so that you can do that. And like I said, 100% of those profits are gonna to go to Reflections of Grace. And I feel really good about that. I, f I feel good about this project. I really enjoyed uh, doing this video. I really enjoyed bringing you this series. Uh, it, was, it was some of my best work to date, I think. And part of that has to do with this facility, uh, having better lighting, having the ability to move around. It really affords me a lot of opportunities to, to bring better, better video to you. The other thing that's changed since is I have a new website now uh, since I started shooting this and on that new website uh, when you land on it you will find a list of categories things like engine performance uh, brakes vibrations transmissions all the commonly asked questions that I've gotten over the years I've written articles I've split those articles up into categories I've made those categories available clickable searchable that kind of thing to where if you have an issue with your vehicle this will be the first place to go all you have to do is visit the website click on a category that pertains to your issue and find the subcategory and from there start reading watching videos that kind of thing it's not just it's not just words, There's, it's, it's interactive, so to speak. It has all the videos and everything that I've done that pertain to those issues. I put it together in such a way to try to bring you that information that you can find instantly. We still have our search function, 
uh, that you can use. Uh, type in a couple of keywords into that, type in your check engine light codes into that, and all the information that we have in our database that comes up for that will come up. And you may get an answer to your question that way. If that's still not enough, feel free to sign up for our website and our forum. All you need is an email address. It's absolutely free to sign up for. Just be sure to respond to the confirmation email that should end up in your inbox. If not, check your spam folder, bulk folder, that kind of thing. And, and find that confirmation email and click that activation link. If not, you're not gonna be able to complete your registration. You won't be able to get into the site. Kind of a bummer. And then once you've done that, you can post your question over to the service and repair section on our forum. And a bunch of happy, fun people, including myself, will do our best to try and help you and get you answers to your automotive issues. If you wanna connect with me socially, I can be found at Google+, Facebook, and Twitter. There will also be a bunch of links in the description, including to Reflections of Grace, including to other videos pertaining to this, and, and all kinds of things. So that. The, the story continues down in the description. I invite you to visit that and uh, you know, do your thing. And if you, if you feel so inclined and you have the means, please donate to uh, Reflections of Grace to help prevent uh, uh, another mother from losing a son. And, you know, RIP Ryan. Take care, buddy. And be safe, have fun, stay dirty. Catch you later.